In the last presentation, we have seen about the encryption process in Hill cipher. In this presentation, we will focus on the decryption in Hill cipher. As usual, let's start the session with the outcomes. Upon the completion of this session, the learner will be able to outcome number one, we will understand the basic working of Hill cipher. Outcome number two, we will understand the decryption process in Hill cipher. And outcome number three, we will know how to decrypt the cipher text using Hill cipher. We know basically the classical encryption techniques is of two types. One is the substitution technique and the other one is the transposition technique. We are now in the substitution technique and we are focusing on the Hill cipher. To be precise, we are focusing on the decryption of Hill cipher. In order to understand the decryption process of Hill cipher and the encryption process of Hill cipher, we are going to review few terminologies from the linear algebra. Few mathematical concepts should be known by us before progressing into the Hill cipher encryption and decryption process. The concepts include the matrix arithmetic modulo 26, the square matrix, the determinant, the adjoint matrix, the multiplicative inverse. No worries guys, while solving the problem, I'll help you to solve these concepts in a simplified manner. Before stepping into the decryption, we will review the Hill cipher encryption and decryption process. The encryption of the Hill algorithm is expressed as the ciphertext is equal to the encryption of the plain text with the help of the key. What we are going to do in the encryption? It's a simple matrix multiplication, right? So the plain text is multiplied with the key matrix which is performed with modulo 26. We'll be getting some numbers and the alphabets what we get to those numbers is the ciphertext, right? We have elaborately seen this in the last presentation. In this presentation, we are going to focus on the decryption process where the decryption is the reverse of encryption. We know how we are going to do this. So in the decryption, we are going to take the ciphertext and this ciphertext is going to be given to the decryption algorithm, which is also going to take the key and then we will be getting the plain text back. But if you note here, here the ciphertext is multiplied by the key inverse matrix. See here for encryption, we use the key matrix as such. Whereas here we are going to find the key inverse matrix that is the inverse matrix of the key K and then we are going to perform modulo 26 and whatever we get will be numbers and the alphabets or letters equivalent to those numbers will be the plain text, right? No worries guys. Anyway, the topic of the day is decryption in Hill cipher. Before stepping into the decryption, let's just quickly run through the encryption process. Basically, we know in the encryption, we'll be getting the cipher text, which is the product of the plain text matrix multiplied by the key matrix modulo 26. It's a simple and a straightforward operation, right? If it is a three cross three key matrix, then we'll be taking or encrypting three plain text letters at the same time, right? So when we are going to take three plain text letters at the same time, we'll be getting three cipher text letters and then we'll be performing the mod 26 also. And we have seen about how to generate C1, C2, C3 elaborately in the last presentation. So we are sure that the encryption is the simple matrix multiplication. So the ciphertext is the product of the plain text matrix with the key matrix mod 26. But if you see here, the decryption uses K inverse. So decryption requires the K inverse that is the inverse matrix. So let's understand the decryption process elaborately. We are clear that the decryption requires K inverse. What is K inverse? The inverse matrix of K, right? So how to find K inverse? Let me give you the formula to find the K inverse. K inverse is equal to 1 upon determinant of K multiplied by the adjoint K. So here if you observe, there are two things we wanted to find before finding the K inverse. First one is the determinant K and then we need to find the adjoint K then we need to perform 1 over determinant k and whatever we get here that should be multiplied with the adjoint k and do always remember we have mod 26 at the end, right? So we are sure that to find the k inverse, we need to find the determinant k and the adjoint k. Before progressing with this, I request you to pause this video for a while, take a pen and a notepad or papers so that you can parallelly solve the problem when I am solving. Since we are dealing with the mathematical stuff, it is always advisable to practice for having better insights about the problem and the solution. I hope you are done. So let's start finding the determinant k first. In the last presentation, that is in the encryption process, we have taken this only as the key value. 
I hope you do remember this. And also I wanted to tell you one thing. If you are directly watching the decryption process, I request you to understand the encryption process first and then come to the decryption process. This approach only will help you to gain more knowledge about Hill Cipher. So I am taking the same key matrix what I have taken in the previous presentation. So K is equal to 17, 17, 5, 21, 18, 21, 2, 2, 19. This is a 3 cross 3 matrix. So we are going to find the determinant of K, right? Why we are going to find the determinant of K? Because we are going to calculate the inverse matrix. So this key inverse required determinant K should be found and the adjoint K. So firstly we are focusing on finding the determinant of K. So it's clear that we are going to find the determinant of K mod 26. Let's find the determinant K. I'm not going to proceed with the traditional methodology because here I'm not dealing with the matrix operations. But my intention is to find the inverse of K, but still we want to find the determinant K. So I'm not going to use the traditional or the conventional method for finding this. Rather, I'm going to use a shortcut for doing this. How we are going to find the determinant of K when it is a 3 cross 3 matrix? It's so simple. Just see, I'm going to focus only on the first row. Please make a note of this. For finding the determinant K, I'm going to focus only on the first row. First, I am going to take this value. So this corresponding column and this corresponding row is going to be hidden. Then we'll be having only these four values. I'm going to carry out an operation with these four values only. Then I'm going to hide this value. Then this corresponding column and this corresponding row is going to be hidden. Still we'll be having four values. This, this, this and this. And finally I'm going to take this value. I'm going to hide this column and this row. Still we'll be having four values. And operation is going to be carried out with these four values. I know it will be quite difficult for you to understand now. Let's see how I am going to do. As mentioned, so I am going to focus on this row only. And in this row, let's start with the first value, this 17. So I am going to focus on this 17. Obviously, I am going to hide this column and this row. I did this, right? So I am left with only these four values. So just see how I am going to get this. So I have only 17, 18, 21, 2 and 19. So I am going to use 17 into this 18 into 19 minus 21 into 2 or 2 into 21. Always remember this value is multiplied by 18 into 19 minus 2 into 21. Please remember it is minus for these two values. How I am going to get this? It is 17 into 18 into 19 minus 2 into 21. Let me write this here. 17 into 18 into 19 which is this minus 2 into 21 which is this right so we are done with the first row's first element right this first row's first element now let's focus on the second value which is this value what is this value which is 17 right so here we are going to hide this corresponding column and this corresponding row so i am going to hide this so we are going to focus on this 17 and we have these four values so as usual this 17 into 21 into 19 minus 2 into 21, right? Just see, so it is 17 into, that is this 17 into 19 into 21 or 21 into 19 minus 2 into 21, which is this, right? Please make a note of this. For this, it is plus. For this, it is minus. For this, it is plus. And that's why for this value, I am using minus here. And only one element is pending in order to complete this determinant matrix is this element, right? So we will focus on that now. So we are left with only this value, isn't it? So I am going to focus on this value. So I am going to hide the corresponding column and the corresponding row. This is a plus value. As mentioned, this is plus, this is minus and this is plus, right? So plus 5 into 21 into 2 minus 2 into 18. So how I am doing this? Plus 5 into 21 into 2 minus 2 into 18. Always remember we have mod 26 at the end. So use mod 26. Let's simplify this. So when we simplify this equation, which is 17 into 300, we get here minus 17 into 357, we get here and plus 5 into 6 here. We get 5100 minus 60, 69 plus 30 mod 26. After simplification, we get minus 939 mod 26. Remember, this is minus 939 mod 26. It need not be the case. Always we should get a negative value here. We may get a negative value or we may get a positive value. It's not a problem here. So how to simplify this further? Just divide 939 by 26. So 939 divided by 26, what will be the remainder? It will be 3. 
but remember it is minus 939 so we get the remainder minus 3 and how to make it as a positive number it's so simple whenever you get a minus number in the mod operation just add these two values so 26 plus minus 3 what we will get it's plus 23 right so that's the determinant value so we got to know the determinant of the key matrix which is 23 always remember Whenever you get a minus value in the mod, just add these two values. That is minus 3 plus 26. Minus 3 plus 26 will be 23. Anyway, don't worry about this mod. In the next chapter, we are going to deal elaborately about the modular arithmetic in a mathematical way. So until then, just have this shortcut. So minus 3 plus 26 will be 23. So we found the determinant of the key matrix, which is 23. So we are done with finding the determinant k. And what's the next thing we wanted to find? It's the adjoint k, right? So let's now focus on finding the adjoint k. Once determinant k and adjoint k are known, we will just do this operation so that we will get the key inverse, which is the inverse matrix k. Let's focus on finding the adjoint k. We know we are going to find this part because already we have found this determinant k to be 23. Let's now find the adjoint k. To find the adjoint of the key matrix k, Again, I'm not going to use the conventional method for finding this. Rather, I'm going to use a shortcut. How to find this adjoint in a shortcut manner? Just take the key matrix. So this is the key matrix what we have taken. We know we have taken the key matrix for finding the determinant, right? The same key we are taking. This is the key which is used for encryption also. So I'm taking the same key matrix. See how many rows, how many columns I have? 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. I have 3 rows, 3 columns. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to repeat the first two columns again and I'm going to repeat the first two rows again. No worries, if you don't understand, just watch this. I'm taking the key matrix. I'm focusing on the first two columns now. I'm going to repeat the first two columns again. Can you see here? These first two columns are just repeated again. This key matrix is placed here. Then I'm repeating the first two columns again. As mentioned, we need to repeat the first two columns and the first two rows. Here, I have completed repeating the first two columns. What is pending? Repeating the first two rows. I'll go to the next slide. We are done with repeating the first two columns, right? Now, let's repeat the first two rows. So, these two are the first two rows we have. I'm going to repeat these first two rows again. Can you see here? I have now a 5 cross 5 matrix. Can you see here? I have now a 5 cross 5 matrix where the first two columns are repeated and the first two rows are repeated. Can you see here, these first two rows are just repeated again. Let's go to a new slide so that you will understand what operation I am going to carry out in order to find the adjoint key. I am in the new slide. So we have a 5 cross 5 matrix. Just ignore the first row and the first column. This is the first row and this is the first column. So just ignore the first row and the first column. Then we have only a 4 cross 4 matrix. So we are going to find the adjoint k with these four rows and four columns. So ultimately we are going to focus on only these values. What did I do? I just took the key matrix. I repeated the first two columns and the first two rows. I strike out the first row and the first column. Then whatever I get, this is going to be used for generating the adjoint k. Let's see how to generate this adjoint k. Let's focus only on these four rows and these four columns. And we are sure that the first column and the first row are not considered. Now, how to find this adjoint k in a simplified manner? It's so simple. Just see, to find the adjoint k, I'm going to focus on the first two columns, do the operation with the column and write the result in row. Please remember, I'm taking the first two columns, going to do an operation with the two columns and writing the result in the row. No worries, we will just see this now. As mentioned, just focus on the first two columns. So first I am going to do 18 into 19 minus 2 into 21. So 18 into 19 minus 2 into 21, I am writing this in the row. So the first row, first column value is generated. How to generate the first row, second column value? That is this value. So just repeat this. 2 into 5 minus 19 into 17 or 17 into 19. I repeat 2 into 5 minus 17 into 19, which is this. So we are done with the first row, second column, right? Let's see the first row, third column. How to generate that? 17 into 21 minus 18 into 5, right? So just see here, 17 into 21 minus 18 into 5. 
which is this, right? So 17 into 21 minus 18 into 5. So we took the first two columns, we generated the first row of the adjoint matrix. So it's clear that we are going to perform the operation column wise and entering the adjoint matrix row wise. So we are going to do the operation column wise and entering into the matrix row wise. Let's do that for the second row of the adjoint matrix, which is this, which is 21 into 2 minus 19 into 21. Take this value and place it in the second row's first column. Then 19 into 17 minus 5 into 2, which is this. Then 5 into 21 minus 21 into 17, which is this. So we have generated the second row of the adjoint matrix and we are left with the third row of the adjoint matrix. How to generate that? Take these two columns and perform the same operation. Just see how I am generating the third row, which is 21 into 2 minus 2 into 18, which is the first value of the third row. So 2 into 17 minus 17 into 2, which is this. 17 into 18 minus 21 into 17, which is this. So we have generated the adjoint matrix. Okay, let's simplify this. After simplification, we get this. Is this the adjoint matrix? Yes, of course, this is the adjoint matrix. But we need to remember, always there is mod 26, isn't it? So we need to still simplify this. How to simplify this? Very simple. Take every value, divide it by 26, whatever we get as the remainder, that is placed here. So 300 divided by 26, what we will get? Some number we will get as the remainder, right? So put that number here. So minus 313 divided by 26, we'll be getting some remainder. That remainder should be placed here. So after simplification, we get 14 minus 1, 7, minus 19, 1, minus 18, 6, 0, minus 25. Always remember there is more 26. But I told you we are always focusing on the positive values, right? Still we have some negative values here. How to convert all these negative values to be positive? It's so simple. Just add this, right? So 14 is a positive value. I am not going to touch that. So minus 1, I want to convert this into a positive number. Just add this. Minus 1 plus 26. It is 25, right? Here it will be 25. So here, minus 19 plus 26. We get 7, right? So here it is going to be 7. Minus 18 plus 26, it's going to be 8, right? So here it is going to be 8. So minus 25 plus 26, it's plus 1. So once we are done with this, we get 14, 25, 7, 7, 1, 8, 6, 0, 1. So we are done with finding the adjoint k. So what we have done so far? We have previously completed finding the determinant of the key matrix. Now we have found out the adjoint k. So we will just place the values what we have found. So we know 1 upon 23. What is this 23? This is the determinant of the key matrix K that we have found. So I am placing this here. Multiplied by what is the adjoint of the key matrix K we have found. Which is this. Right. So I am just placing this more 26. So what is this? This is actually 23 inverse. Right. So 1 upon 23 can be written as 23 inverse multiplied by this value mod 26. So remember this 1 upon 23 I am just writing it as 23 inverse. What is this 23 inverse? It is a multiplicative inverse. I will just put this way. What is the multiplicative inverse of 5? It is 1 by 5, right? Because a number when it is multiplied by its inverse, we should be getting 1 as the result. Say if we get 3, what is the multiplicative inverse of 3? It is 1 by 3. So 3 into 1 by 3 will be 1, right? So likewise, 1 by 23 means it is 23 inverse. So I am going to find the multiplicative inverse of 23 mod 26. I know it will be little bit confusing. No worries. I repeat this and then I will carry out with the operation. See, we have found out the determinant of k. This is 23. Now this 1 by 23, I am writing it as 23 inverse, right? Now I am going to find what is 23 inverse. 23 inverse means what? It is the multiplicative inverse of 23, right? So I am going to find the multiplicative inverse of 23. So it's clear that I am going to find the multiplicative inverse of 23. So the multiplicative inverse of 23 is 17. How did I get this? See, 23 inverse is 17. Is it 17 always for 23 inverse? No. So 23 inverse more 26 is 17. So 17 is the multiplicative inverse of 23. It means when 17 is multiplied by 23, we get the remainder as 1 when it is divided by 26. If things are not clear, let me show this table. See, 
we are going to find the multiplicative inverse of 23, right? Because 1 by 23 is what? 23 inverse. So, we are going to find the multiplicative inverse of 23 which is this. So, when a multiplicative inverse is multiplied by that number, we will be getting 1 as the remainder normally. But here we have more 26 operation, isn't it? So, when a number, when it is divided by its inverse or when a number, when it is divided by its inverse, when this result is divided by 26, we should get the remainder 1. Then only this can be a multiplicative inverse. Say for example, we will take a number 5. 5 is multiplied by 1 by 5, we get 1, isn't it? Because we don't have any mod there. But when you have a mod operation, a number, when it is multiplied by its inverse, when that result is divided by the mod value, which is 26 in this case, then we should get the remainder 1. So, we are going to find 23 inverse. What is the value of 23 inverse that we are going to find now? So, that value when it is multiplied by 23, whatever we get here as a result, when that value is divided by 26, we should get the remainder 1. There is an easy way to find the multiplicative inverse. We can apply the extended Euclidean algorithm to find the multiplicative inverse. Since we have not touched upon the number theory and the algebra concepts, I am not going to offer solution using extended Euclidean algorithm in this presentation. Rather, I am going to teach you the manual way of doing this. Anyway, we will find the multiplicative inverse of 23 mod 26 in the coming lecture. So, as mentioned, we are going to find the multiplicative inverse of 23, right? So, this is this. What is this 23 inverse? I am going to find that, right? So, let's start with the number 1. So, it means 23 inverse is 1. We are assuming 23 inverse is 1 now. So, 1 into 23, what do we get here? 1 into 23 is 23. When 23 divided by 26, what will be the remainder we will get? It's 23, right? So, 23 more 26 is 23 only. So, we should get 1, right? When we will get 1? When this is the multiplicative inverse. So, we are not getting 1 here as the remainder. Let's move on to 2. 2 into 23 is 46. So, 46 when it is divided by 26, what will be the remainder? 46 divided by 26, we will get the remainder 20, which is also not 1 here. So, 2 cannot be a multiplicative inverse for 23 more 26. So, let's move on to the next value 3. 3 into 23 is 69. 69 more 26, that is 69 divided by 26, we will get the remainder 17. So, 3 is not the multiplicative inverse of 23. Let's take 4. 4 into 23 is 92. 92 more 26 is 14. So, 4 is also not the multiplicative inverse of 23 more 26. Let's take 5. 5 into 23 is 115. 115 more 26 is 11 as the remainder. This is also not the multiplicative inverse of 23. So, we are progressing like 6 into 23 which is 138. We get the remainder 8 when it is divided by 26. 7 into 23 is 161. We get remainder 5. 8 into 23 is 184. 9 into 23 is 207. 10 into 23 is 230. 11 into 23 is 253. 253 more 26. We get remainder 19. So, 12 into 23 is 276. 13 into 23 is 299. 14 into 23 is 322. 15 into 23 is 345, 16 into 23 is 368, 368 divided by 26, we get the remainder 4. So, this is also confirms that 16 is not the multiplicative inverse for 23 and coming to 17. So, 17 when it is multiplied by 23, we get 391, 391 divided by 26, we get the remainder 1. It means 17 is the multiplicative inverse of 23 mod 26. Please remember, 17 is the multiplicative inverse of 23 mod 26, not simply 23. So, we found that 23 inverse is what? 17, because we intended to find what is 23 inverse and we did the manual operation and finally we found out 17. This approach may not be the right approach to solve the problem quickly, but no other way because I haven't introduced the extended Euclidean algorithm. So, and that's why I'm going with this manual way. Please follow my lecture on multiplicative inverse using extended Euclidean algorithm in the coming lectures. There I will teach you how to crack this easily. And that's why I have placed 17 here. Now the calculation becomes simple, right? So 17 is multiplied by the adjoint k which is this mod 26. We'll perform the operation now. Take this 17 and multiply this with every individual matrix values. So 17 into 14, 17 into 25, 17 into 7. 
17 into 7, 17 into 1, 17 into 8, 17 into 6, 17 into 0, 17 into 1. So when we do this, we will get this value again. We have mod 26. We know how to simplify this. Take every individual value, divide it by 26, whatever we get as the remainder that will be placed here. Ha! Huh. At last we found the key inverse, right? So this is the key inverse value. How to verify this is the right key value? Any number when it is multiplied by its inverse, we get 1, right? But here we know k is a matrix. So k matrix when it is multiplied by its inverse matrix, which is k inverse, that is k into k inverse should give the identity matrix or the unit matrix. It means only in the diagonal we have 1, in other places we will have 0. We will call such matrix as a unit matrix or identity matrix. This identity matrix or unit matrix will always be a square matrix where the number of rows and the number of columns will be one and the same. In this example, it is going to be a square matrix only because we have a 3 cross 3 matrix which is already a square matrix. No worries, I'll just show you how to verify this k inverse what we have obtained. K when it is multiplied by k inverse, we will get the unit matrix where we will have ones in the diagonals and in the other places we will have zeros. We will call such matrix as a unit matrix or identity matrix. So k we know what is there in the question. This is k. We found k inverse just now. k into k inverse. Just perform the matrix multiplication. We get this value. Apply mod 26. Finally, we are getting an identity matrix. So this slide confirms that whatever we found out as k inverse seems to be correct because this when it is multiplied by k mod 26, we get the identity matrix or the unit matrix where 1 is there only in the diagonals. So we are done with finding and verifying the k inverse. Let's solve a problem now. We know the question is encrypt pay more money using hill cipher with the key value this. In the last presentation we solved that the plain text pay more money is encrypted as this, isn't it? Now let's do the decryption. So we are going to decrypt this value using hill cipher with the key the same key. So we know the key inverse we have already found, right? Because decryption requires k inverse. So we will get the plain text back. How? When the cipher text is multiplied by key inverse. We know how to find the key inverse. Key inverse is 1 upon determinant of key multiplied by adjoint k, mod 26. And we know this is the cipher text and we want to get the plain text back. So we are going to take the numbers pertaining to every individual letters of the cipher text. So we have these values, right? So I am going to take first three values RRL. Why RRL is going to be taken? Because it's a 3 cross 3 matrix. Let's start doing the decryption. It's RRL I am going to decrypt now. So RRL the cipher text is multiplied by the key inverse mod 26. We know the number for RRL is 171714. 17, Do the regular matrix multiplication. Perform mod 26. We get pay. So the plain text for RRL is pay. It's clear that RRL means it's pay. Let's decrypt MWB. So when we do MWB, MWB multiplied by K inverse, we get this as the result. So the cipher text MWB means it is MOR. Let's find KAS. So KAS has this number when matrix multiplication is carried out, we get EMO. So EMO is the plain text for KAS. And finally PDH. So replace the numbers, do the regular matrix multiplication, we get NEY which is this. So we got pay more money back from this cipher text. So finally we got the plain text pay more money from this cipher text with this key value. Remember I have not used this key value. I found the key inverse. This key inverse is very much needed for the decryption. Before we conclude I wanted to state one thing here. In this presentation and the previous presentations, we have taken the PK approach where the cipher text is the product of the plain text and the key matrix. In the last presentation itself, I told you that we can also use KP approach where cipher text is the product of the key and the plain text. So if you prefer encryption using C is equal to K into P mod 26 approach, then do the decryption as P is equal to K inverse into C mod 26. Instead of P is equal to C into K inverse mod 26. And that's it guys. I hope now you understood the basic working of Hill cipher. We understood the decryption process in Hill cipher. We also know how to decrypt the cipher text using Hill cipher. I hope you guys enjoyed this presentation and thank you for watching.